People love meteors, and everyone loves to see a shooting star. Everyone knows that for every shooting star, you get to make a wish. So going out on the right night, under the right conditions in the right sky, you could potentially get 200 wishes in a single night. That's part of what the AMS is charged with. We want to create excitement about meteors. We want to create excitement about science, because it's not just meteors and what's the benefit of studying a meteor to a science. And it is, hey, this person that you turn on to meteors today might develop an appreciation for space overall tomorrow and engineering the next day. There's a deficit of scientific um, enthusiasm and talent in the United States, in our schools, and anything that you can do to kind of soup that up is a good thing. And people get excited about meteors, and all they have to really do is be exposed to them or, or see a fireball, and they want to know more. Most users find our site after experiencing or witnessing a fireball event. And how it goes down for, for most of these people is they don't know anything about meteors, and they don't know much about space. Jesus, what the hell is that? Oh my God. They're amazed, scared, and they go to Google. That went behind a cloud. And they type in, I just saw a bright light in the sky, and then our site comes up. And we have an FAQ that explains what fireballs are in great detail, and we have a fireball report that says, if you've seen a fireball, click here. They click in, they come into the site, and the first thing they do is they type in, where did they see the fireball? And immediately we query Google Maps and bring, using their, the Google API, and we show a satellite map of that location with an icon of a person in the center of the map. We ask the user to select the icon and drag it to the exact position. So they, once they've determined their location, they continue to the next page, and we ask them the date and time that they saw the meteor. Now this is honestly one of the biggest and most important fields that we collect. It's what we most accurately can determine because we average all of the times um, into a common time and on satellite re-entries and fireball events that have been videotaped with timestamps, we've come within one minute of the event happening. It's really remarkable how well, on average, we can get these times. So we, we want to get the time, and we ask for the duration. Now, the duration of a fireball event, with that, if it's properly recorded, you can use it to determine the velocity of the fireball you must have the velocity of the fireball to accurately plot the orbit of the fireball. Plotting the orbit of the fireball is one of the most beneficial things that you can do about a fireball event because it tells you where the fireball came from in space. We think we've come up with the method to actually accurately capture this elapsed time value. So we've devised a system where after a witness files their fireball report on the web, they are prompted to download an app for Android or an app for iPhone, and they're given a code for their witness report. And the way that it will work is after the user enters their start point and end point for their meteor, we already know the azimuth, and we ask them to drag the phone along the track in the sky at the speed that they saw the meteor. So what the user would do for the velocity collection screens is they would take the phone and they would point it to their starting point and there's a button to say start and they click start and a countdown would happen. Three, two, one. They've already been instructed to drag the phone at the speed of which they saw the meteor to the ending point. So we have the counter to eliminate an extra millisecond of button push. So they push the button, they move their hand away. Three, two, one. Well, I saw the meteor and it was going like this and it went about this fast, it went about this fast, it went about this fast, and then, yeah, it stopped. And the app is coded, so it will automatically terminate. We're getting a very accurate recording of the elapsed time, and we're not asking the user, how long did you see the meteor? We're saying, show me how it moved through the sky. We then ask them the direction of travel. Was it moving from the left to the right or the right to the left? We then display 
an image of a person with their neck tilting up and down and an a image of the horizon. And we ask them to drag the mouse up and down to determine where they saw the fireball in the sky. If all you really cared about was meteorite recovery, the elevation angles are less important because through the azimuth values alone, you can determine the track and the general location of where the fireball happened. And that's all you really need to do to, to recover meteorites. But if you're interested in determining the orbits of these fireballs and where they come from in space, the elevation is very important because you need it to plot the three-dimensional track of the fireball and how steep it was or shallow when it came in. We then go through this sequence for the ending point. So what we're trying to do is collect where you first saw it and where you last saw it. And if we can do that with more than really two people, but preferably dozens or hundreds of people, we have software that will plot the relationship between every person that saw that fireball and see where did your sighting and my sighting intersect. And we compute those intersection points in longitude and latitude and store them in the database. We can easily blow out 10,000 or more intersection points between all these relationships, between all these witnesses. And then we ask them a few more questions about the fireball. How bright was it? Uh, did it fragment? Did it leave a train? Did you hear a boom? This is, again, one of the more important questions that we ask because Events that have booms associated with them are rare. They are indic indicative of meteorite dropping fireballs, and most of the time, a, a, a fireball that booms means there's meteorites on the ground. So we want to know that. We want to know how long it took before the boom hit you, because there's clues about the booms that reveal where the meteorite exploded and where the meteorites are going to be on the ground. We ask for the color. People and witnesses will describe the same fireball in, you know, 10 different colors. We ask them about a train. We ask them that if it flashed and fragmented. Um, and then we collect their contact information. Version 2 of the AMS website had several goals, one of which was to create a social community site, a place where people could register, join the community, create a profile, you know, some text about them, upload a profile picture, and then do things on the site. What are some of the things you could do on the site? You can do on the site. You can upload photos of meteors that you've taken with your DSLR camera or all sky camera or video camera. You can upload videos of meteors that you've gotten with the security camera or all sky camera. You can log your meteor observations. You can also learn how to do all these things if you don't already know how to do them. You can, if you operate an all-sky camera, you can log the location of that all-sky camera and register it with AMS. And when you do that, you'll get alerts when fireballs happen in your area so that you can double check your, your camera and see if that you got a picture of that, um, that fireball. We give you the facility to then upload that picture or that video that you caught straight into the site. So we're trying to really encourage the community of amateur astronomers and people that have an interest in fireballs or an interest in meteors or people that have witnessed meteors to join the community and start contributing and learning more, learning how to observe, learning how to capture meteors on your DSLR, photograph meteors with a DSLR, learning how to build your own all-sky camera and operate your own all-sky camera. That's the vision. So we're building a community to educate people to collect data. And we want to do all of these things as efficiently and as effectively as we can. And it's a reiterative cycle where we build out the initial vision, which was the fireball report and, you know, a new site. And then the second version, which was the maps and the analysis that went along with these fireball reports and the community. And now we're building the third version of the site, which is we're changing it from a site to a platform. It's extending beyond just the web onto the phones and into hardware camera systems that will allow us to eventually cover the United States with all sky cameras. So that no matter where a meteor goes down, no matter what time of day, we're gonna have a video of that meteor that will allow us to capture the velocity 
the magnitude, the direction, the azimuth, and the elevation with extreme precision. So we're really hoping through this version three of the website that we're gonna fix the last of the scientific defects of data collection, add to the mix these a complete you know, set of data, and close the loop on the whole website and the experience, taking it off of the web and into the field to collect fireball event data in the field, to collect meteor observation data in the field, and then send it back up to the web from the field. Completely integrated, closed circle experience. One side benefit of all this, meteor falls from the sky, hundreds of people witness it and report what they see. Maybe a couple of guys have picked up all sky cameras and record it. We plot the trajectory. We go to that place, we find rocks on the ground. That's a benefit of what all that we're doing.